Call of Duty has never been a stranger to glitches and exploits, and I think a lot of people would argue it's part of the Call of Duty charm we all know and love. So since the launch of Warzone, it's no surprise that we've seen a ton of them throughout its over four year lifespan. So today I wanted to go through the entire history of glitches and exploits in Warzone. Aside from glitches, we're also going to be including mechanics and items that were abused in a way the developers didn't have intended that became game breaking. Also, I'm not including any guns for this list because I have a list for that already. From infinite health, invisibility, and disagreement to the laws of physics, there's a lot of glitches on this list I forgot about or never even knew of in the first place, and I'm sure you'll be able to say the same by the end of this video. Go ahead and comment the most game-breaking glitch in Warzone. We've seen a couple different iterations of this, but the main one essentially just gave you unlimited tacticals. While having unlimited stuns is one way to troll someone, it was unlimited stims that were ruining end games left and right. This glitch was actually super easy, which made it even more frustrating because anyone and everyone could do it. All you had to do was go down and get revived, and whenever you got revived, you just had to spam whichever tactical you had equipped, then you would have unlimited of that tactical. So this means that you could drop in and immediately do this glitch, then run out of bounds and spam stims for the rest of the game and get a 100% secured win as long as no one else doing the same thing in your lobby. Gas exploits seem to just go hand in hand in Warzone, and trust me, this is not the last we're going to see of gas exploits on this list. Imagine having a good game, maybe you're even on PR pace, and you make it to the last zone, destroying all enemies in your path, only to have the final circle close on you with no other enemy in sight, and then you die to the gas with absolutely nothing you can do about it. Well, this was a pretty common occurrence just after Warzone launched. The Berthas have been a staple of Warzone ever since launch and were even included in Call of Duty Blackout. I think part of the reason it's the only vehicle with the nickname is because of how dominant and relevant they used to be. Seriously, the launch Berthas were a completely different kind of animal. The main difference in pre-patch Berthas was the turn radius, acceleration, and overall speed was seriously no different than that of the four-wheeler it felt like. Oh, and also, it was pretty much impossible to shoot the driver even if you were aiming directly at them. Once people caught on to how good the Berthas were, Warzone was immediately polluted with Bertha endgame abusers. It seriously created a vehicle meta that was a viable tactic for just farming wins early on. You were pretty much driving an armored truck with all the same speed traits and like handling traits as a four-wheeler. When your car can turn quick, is super fast overall, and pretty much indestructible even if you're shooting directly at the driver, this makes for a pretty unfair and unbalanced playstyle. If you think heavy chopper endgames today were bad, you haven't seen anything till there's multiple berthas in the final circle and Warzone just turns into a game of twisted metal. Seriously, if you've been playing Warzone since launch, I want you to comment how many games you've lost to bertha trolls. There's another extremely easy glitch that had insane benefits. The Rose and Groot skins were a major point of controversy in Warzone since you could often blend into your surroundings and seemingly vanish into thin air. But what if I told you there was a way to actually disappear in Warzone? Well, with this glitch, that was possible. All you had to do was buy a loadout, then stand directly underneath the marker and let it crush you. If done correctly, you would be clipped into the crate, but would eventually be spat back out and on your screen, everything would be normal. But for everyone else, you were 100% invisible with no way of telling where you were. This goes without saying, but this made for some of the most most unfair encounters you could possibly have in a video game. Being able to run up on an entire team and get to point blank range with absolutely no worry to movement or visibility is probably the craziest exploit we've ever seen in Warzone, but in COD history in general. There was another version of this glitch in Warzone where you would go prone underneath the armored truck during Armored Royale and once again you become invisible. I'm not sure what caused this to happen, it might be something with the collision, I don't really know, but I hope something like this never ever happens again. This is similar to the stim glitch, but this was more like unlimited stim effect. It wasn't too game breaking, but for sure it gave you the upper hand in most fights. If you wanted to move like you snorted two lines of G Fuel until you died, you needed to jump from a height that would kill you, but before you hit the ground, use your stim and then revive yourself. Once revived, you had a permanent stim effect. This meant you not only ran faster, but the biggest advantage you had was a super long slide. I mean, seriously, it was like you were playing Apex Legends. However, to put this thing into overdrive was using dead silence alongside this, and you actually became like the fastest you could ever move in Warzone on foot. It was pretty much like you had stamina up, lightweight, marathon, and juiced all active at once. Similar to Bertha's, this is just another example of something not functioning the way they had intended in Warzone. I don't know how this always happens, but whoever does the demos for these and like beta testing and whatnot needs to get fired. Alongside Caldera, we got the planes, which not only brought one of the worst maps into Warzone, but also one of the most no-skill methods for kills we've ever seen. Across Caldera, there were several pilotable planes that were twice as broken as the Bertha's, making them the most broken vehicle we've ever seen. They were fast, which made it very difficult to hit the person flying them or hit the vehicle whatsoever with an explosive. Compare that to a helicopter, which as long as your face 
chasing them head on, shooting at the pilot was pretty easy. Planes were also really easy to fly and to navigate around the map, had decent durability, and they would even lock onto enemies for you without having to really aim at them. But the main factor with the planes that was so broken that really convinces me that they didn't even bother testing out the values before releasing was the raw damage output. There is countless footage of people exploiting these planes, and even in my kill record video, the kill record on Caldera is held by Hisokat who got 34 kills before setting foot on ground. Yes, 34 kills with a plane. The meta for the longest time was finding the nearest plane off drop and immediately find a team flying in and wipe them before they even got the chance to land, which is something you should never be able to do in any battle royale ever. As part of Vanguard Season 2 Reloaded, we had Rebirth Reinforced, which added a ton of new features to Rebirth, one of which were the helicopters that had turrets on each side. While I do like this idea and would love to see it added to one of the BR maps like Urzikstan, this simply was not meant to be on Rebirth Island. Shortly after realizing how broken these turrets were, people were immediately going to these helicopters, parking them on top of a water tower or another vantage point, and wreaking havoc on the entire lobby. Specifically on water tower, you could pretty much see the entire map aside from Stronghold Living Quarters and Control, but if you were literally outside anywhere else on the map, you were not safe. The damage and rate of fire were insane on its own, but the real broken aspect was the range and velocity of it. It was pretty much like shooting a laser. Like I just said, you are very vulnerable when you're in a helicopter, but if you started taking shots, you would immediately out damage them because the turret was just that good. It's one thing to commit vehicular manslaughter with helicopters, that's a core warzone mechanic and more power to you if that's your thing. But these turrets were broken beyond belief. These helicopters saw a very short lifespan as they were taken out of the game shortly after they were added because of all the negative feedback, and if I'm not mistaken, they've never been brought back since. Here's one that I never got to use, but basically this was a stim glitch, but on steroids. Find a gas mask and then go to a stronghold and kill a bot. You also needed a medium or large backpack because this was all possible due to the stowing a third gun mechanic. Now you drop your gas mask near the bot's dropped gun, look at their gun, but slowly strafe towards the gas mask. And once you're prompted to pick up your gas mask, instead stow the gun. Not only will you duplicate a gas mask into your inventory, it will also have a zillion percent when it comes to durability. And apparently 50,000% is enough to survive a whole entire game in the gas. So yes, just another example of storm related Items not working how they're supposed to. This was pretty much the same as the unlimited stim effect during Warzone Pacific, but with Dead Silence and Battle Rage, which I would argue is more broken. The way you did it was super easy, once again, another shocker. You had to use Dead Silence or Battle Rage, then manually equip a different field upgrade to your field upgrade slot. If that sounds too difficult for you, you could just use Dead Silence, then go to a buy station and buy a munitions box, since that would equip it to your field upgrade slot automatically. Unlike a lot of glitches on this list, I think this one was pretty preventable. I mean, I think using Dead Silence or Battle Rage, then buying a munitions box isn't exactly like out of the order so I think they could have detected this. Anyways, I really don't think having unlimited battle rage is all that game breaking. I would never want unlimited battle rage because your screen gets all yucky and your footsteps are louder and your guns just kind of feel really clunky with the recoil. The real game breaking factor here was having unlimited dead silence. Warzone footstep audio is probably one of the most inconsistent features we've ever seen. Sometimes it's super loud, sometimes you can't hear at all. Having absolutely no regard for footsteps for the entire game just because you know you have a limited dead silence makes for a completely different experience. The amount of times I've been sniping on a building just to be overtaken taken by someone with no audio is super frustrating, and I think at launch of Warzone 2, this was the main reason for that. I would almost put this up there with the invisibility glitch since it created situations you had absolutely no chance in winning no matter how much better you were than someone. Dead Silence has become one of the rarest items in Warzone today, and I hope it stays that way because when anyone can have it permanently, it breaks the game. So this, I guess, also can give you unlimited battle rage and dead silence, but not in the same way. This will simply duplicate whatever field upgrade you want. I never knew how to do this, and even after watching several videos for this video, I still don't understand it. Basically, it's stowing, using, and equipping a field upgrade at the exact same time, and it will pretty much spawn in whatever field upgrade you are going to pick up. I don't, I don't really understand it, don't really care to either. Personally, I don't think this was all that broken until people started using this to duplicate munitions boxes in the final circle and just spam stims the entire game, once again, getting a guaranteed win. But this is nothing like a stim glitch because because it actually required like a lot of like manual inputs and like you could easily mess it up. Other than duplicating munitions box for stims in the final circle, this was a very mild exploit. <laughs> New Warzone engine means a slew of new bugs to come along with it, one of which allows you to turn your Bertha into a submarine. All you needed was a Bertha and a body of water. Once you drove into the water, as soon as it was fully submerged, you would lean out of it and somehow this made the Bertha treat the water as if it wasn't there at all. Like seriously, you were just driving normal as if it was ground and you could also breathe underwater forever. I think this glitch is hilarious and sure it is frustrating if you get killed by someone like this, but the only way you can like really make it work is if you have a water end game, which I guess isn't out of the ordinary. The most broken part about it is that you could still lean out of your car and shoot your your fully automatic primaries instead of just being limited to your pistol like everybody else.
When season two of Warzone 3 arrived, I'm not sure if they reworked the irradiated perk or if it was like the quick fix rework that caused this glitch. For some reason during season two, if you use both these perks together, you had another potential of living in the gas forever. Irradiated was a new perk to Warzone 3 that let you move faster in the gas and also take less damage. Then quick fix would immediately start health regen when you started plating up. So this created a gas play cheese meta, which was spamming plates in the gas, which would let you live in the storm forever. I guess the health regen was moving faster than the health taken from the storm. So as long as you had a bunch of plates, you could live in the gas forever. Pretty much every plate you had was a stim and you could like stow a zillion of them. You could also have armor boxes. There's even this gameplay where like you'd purposely keep a thermite grenade on you so you take damage against your armor plate so you can put another plate in to keep your health going up. Also throw on the fact that you probably have a gas mask and stims as your tactical. I mean, it was just absolutely broken. But with a lot of glitches in Warzone 3, this was removed very quickly after they found it. Season 3 of Warzone 3, we got Beloved Rebirth Island, and alongside that, a new Champion's Quest exclusively for Rebirth, which is also the first time I've ever seen a Champion's Quest in Resurgence. This quest is notoriously hard, and I actually just attempted it last week and got absolutely rolled on. Barely even got the first element. Anyways, there was a way to complete this contract and receive all the rewards for it within seconds of starting a game. Basically, after you got your new contract unlocked, you would load into a game and start an intelligence contract, and you know how you, like, use those to hack other contracts? You would use it to hack the new contract, and you would immediately complete it. Although the the game wouldn't end and the bomb wouldn't go off, the game would think you completed the contract so you would get all the rewards for doing so. The camo, the calling card, the charm, the operator skin, and emblem would immediately be rewarded to your locker, giving one of, if not the hardest achievement in all of Warzone history, the easiest exploit to complete it. Anyways, this only lasted a few days and I don't know if the people who did it were still allowed to keep the rewards after it was patched, and now there is no intelligence contract in the game to prevent this until they fix that bug. Kinda disrespectful to the people who actually completed the contract in my opinion. I wanted to dedicate the last spot on this video to any and all glitch spots throughout Warzone because there have been way more than you would ever think and if I were to like include every single one on this list this video would be well over an hour. Spanning across all maps if you've been playing long enough you've probably been killed by someone abusing one of these spots before. One thing I don't really understand is that like they make the ground penetrable. I don't know why they don't just make it impenetrable so that way these spots have no use. For some reason you can always just like shoot through the ground. I don't know what the logic is there. I swear some people don't even like the game but just load in to private matches just to find any and all spots like these. It's been a staple to COD forever, so it's no surprise that there's already a million on Rebirth Island, and I'm sure there'll only be more to come. But that's all the glitches and exploits in Warzone history. There are a handful of other glitches and exploits in Warzone, but I really wanted to focus on the ones that were prominent and really, really game-breaking. I know there's like a Breathe Underwater glitch right now. There's also been glitches that like give you infinite money. If there's any other glitches you think I should have mentioned in this video, please leave them down below. I'm sure there's a handful I missed. Also, I wanted to give a huge shout out to everyone who's been supporting and watching my channel. I just hit 10,000 subscribers subscribers last week actually like a couple days ago as of me recording this it's crazy i just started like taking this channel a little bit more seriously earlier this year and we're already seeing 10,000 subscribers that is something i never thought would happen this early on so truly from the bottom of my heart thank you so much for all the support and especially like tim the tap man and swag and nick Merckx, the people who are reacting to my content and like saying good things for the most part it just like means the world to me but once again thank you so much for 10,000 subscribers i cannot wait to see what the future has in store